Welcome team to Plastic Surgery Untold. I'm Dr. Johnny Franco, board certified plastic surgeon, also known as Austin Plastic Surgeon. And so I have an incredible crew joining us today, including a special guest, Katie. Katie, would you, would you like to, to introduce yourself to our, our fan base here, a little bit about yourself? Yes, I'm Katie J. I'm a medical esthetician, and I'm so excited to announce that I'm actually getting to work with you every single day, so I'm so excited. Uh, I grew up in Minneapolis. I don't know if anybody knows that, but I grew up in Minnesota and got to Texas as soon as I could because it was way too cold. Um, love it here and really excited to just get to work with everyone, talk about skincare. It's my passion. It's been my industry for 15 years. So I'm really excited. And we'll, we'll get back because today's topic is actually hydrofacial. And yeah. before we do that, of course, we've got our celebrity cast here, including a.k.a. the former uh, most eligible bachelor who on the last episode actually handed his crown, crown over to a uh, gossip, Greg. Yeah. Uh, one G Berto <laughs> signs. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We got uh, Megan Blue Checkmark Parkin, also <laughs> known as Just Megan, <laughs> and then Celebrity Anesthesia Travis Osborne. What's up? Who's actually I think going to be doing a talk for our Austin Society of uh, Plastic Surgeons soon yeah. on on anesthesia. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, low opioid techniques and uh, non narcotic uh, drugs and. Uh, trying to get those patients uh, done without using a bunch of narcotics. Uh, congratulations, because that, that's a huge awesome. honor that, that yeah. this, uh, our society would invite you to, to come uh, speak to that. I think people who maybe listened to episode five uh, about anesthesia, plug, it's a great one, uh, uh, know that, that you actually helped our practice incorporate some stuff to help control pain uh, without narcotics, which has made recovery stuff a little bit easier for people. So yeah, I appreciate it. It's something I'm super passionate about. It helps to work with guys like you that are willing to, to do that for their patients as well and see the value in that and uh, I think that's a good thing moving forward. So, so Katie we usually hear before we jump into the nuts and bolts talk a little bit about what's going on on, on people's lives and yes. uh, can you catch people because one your tan is on point and I think you just got back <laughs> from, from a trip for those of you listening it, it's golden don't you worry this isn't the, <laughs> this isn't the fake spray stuff so no it's what, not uh, what, what, what's been going on? Well I went to Miami because it was my best guy friend's birthday and he was like listen we're gonna go we're gonna whoop it up we're gonna have a time of our lives and so we did we went to Miami and said you're welcome that's what I said oh, wow. <laughs> there it is. It's like, we just, it was so much fun um it's always great to get out and be in a different scene and get to wear different outfits that you maybe wouldn't wear in Austin and I feel just, like anything goes in in Miami everything goes in Miami. I mean eye patches are considered like standard wear Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I saw can, a lot of things. Can, can you give Can you give Megan a little tips? Because she's I'm actually going to I Costa Rica, patches. like eye patch bikinis. Yeah. Oh, oh an eye patch bikini. I was yeah. like, what are you talking I just, about? Just some, I did some, the same thing, can, Megan. I was like, what? Well, I was, obviously, <laughs> obviously, obviously you're, not from, <laughs> you're, you're not from Miami. Clearly. <laughs> can I saw you a lot. Give Megan some, some tips about tanning. She's going to the Bahamas soon. Yeah, okay. Well, I've been to the Bahamas many times. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorite places to go. Is this your first time going? No. Oh, okay, then you've been. But there, I, but so I want to know. know about like skincare and stuff for tanning. Like, I like to be tan, but I know it's not the best. I don't know, I know. about this conversation. Be... Well, well, <laughs> I a dermatologist. As a dermatologist, <laughs> are, would you like to scold our guest? Like to, I mean, yeah. that would be a little bit of a faux pas. But... Yeah, I mean, I did the wrong thing, but I did the right thing. So here's the thing: I don't want to age prematurely, and. Clearly, we, we know don't want tanning beds. I, yeah, I'm not going to age forever frozen in time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> forever. Re refer to episode two. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is that before you go on a trip, the other thing you don't want to do since you know you're going to be in the sun is also not just go out there and fry and burn yourself. Right. My skin, luckily, I've always been able to tan very quickly. So... I don't burn at all. So if I'm out so, in the sun, so you I wear tanned sunscreen. before you went to Miami it's to tan. Is that what you're tan. saying? No, I did a spray tan. Uh, uh, I did Berto, a spray how do you tan. feel about this? My, my mind is like tan. blowing up right now. No, no, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I did a spray tan because I wanted to look tanned so uh -huh. that I would look cute, you know, in my clothes. And then when I got there, obviously I spent time outside, but it's sunscreen. But my skin just naturally gets golden. So, really so I quick. think that this this episode on hydrofacial couldn't come at a better time for you right. because this is what we're going to do to try and repair all the damage you've done right. and the nightmares that you're giving 1G no, no, you have in, to wear in, in the dermatology field. I don't know if I'll be able to sleep No, you have to, <laughs> you have to wear sunscreen. I use Elta. I use their spray because it's my mm -hmm. favorite. Yeah. It's an aero spray. It's amazing. Um, but that's something that you have to do. You have to wear sunscreen. I just happen to naturally be able to get, if I'm in the sun for a half hour, I'm going to be dark. I mean, that Must just happens nice. easy. Yeah. Can, we, can we get, because uh, obviously we have to do our, our weekly plug for Mary at your trendy therapist. Can we get an update <laughs> on how her broken leg is going? Not to be insensitive. Broken leg's going well. Um, we have a uh, follow-up with the appointment, a follow-up appointment with the orthopedic uh, surgeon on Tuesday this mm -hmm. week. So we should know a little bit more about what happens uh, with the rest of the course. But 
PT's going well. She's doing doing better. M- Megan right. said that her account has gone up since since your journey <laughs> therapist account has gone that. down. Arch and nemesis. she was just just making that oh a statement. Gosh. But I think it was more of a statement of just statistically no. numbers. <laughs> yeah. No, no, Megan was actually talking. Um, I think once Mayor gets uh, back up on both legs, they're gonna do a little little shopping yeah, spree together. Yeah, we want to do that. And, and oh, really? Little... Here we go shopping for the guys oh, yeah? on the show. I, yeah, I like that. And we that could be our only friendly competition. We could pick out outfits for each guy. No one knows who picks which one out. Only friendly competition. <laughs> yes. I I yes. like how this is evolving this here. Is cute. So so you're saying you guys you each pick out an app uh, an outfit for one of us blindly and then yeah. we say which one we like better. Mm-hmm. All right, I like yeah. it. I like it. That I mean that this could be dangerous for Travis. For me at home. <laughs> I, I, this this is phenomenal. I actually this sounds really fun. I'm tuning in immediately. <laughs> All right, I, awesome. The Gilberto, since since it sounds like your relationship has still been on a on a slow path to, to nowhere because it's we've gone now gone through 12 episodes <laughs> oh, and okay. you're still said taking it slow. Um, one, would you give us an update and. Uh, so it's still going slow. Okay. So, <laughs> so since, we're, since, we're, since, we're, since we're still going slow, can we maybe skip that today? Because I think it's only been two months since our last taping and, and it's still going slow. I, I heard a rumor <laughs> that you may or may not have brought a little hat I, that represents your true inner feelings and dynamic on this show. Well, I feel like like in the past... I've I've maybe been a little bit more reserved in no. in, in in speaking in the podcast. And <laughs> what I mean, did that's, that that's, come from, producer Donald? That's, or what, who? that's what I've been told. Or the fans? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so I figured maybe maybe what I need to do is bring out bring out my my black sheep hat. Uh, that can we see it? Yeah. Put that on. Oh wow. But I mean, if you're the black sheep, doesn't that mean you're like the 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 redheaded stepchild? Not offense to any of our redheaded stepchildren. Out there. I mean. Oh, that looks I good. Know. I don't know. So what is so what does this mean? It's just like it's just like me just being less reserved, sheep. just being like like a black sheep is less reserved. <laughs> well, like just yeah. you, you know what? Wait, what do you got back there? Huh? O M G. I mean, I, I mean, I'm if done. you're gonna be the black sheep and we're all gonna take a, a role here, I mean, I feel like. I should be the legend. Oh, <laughs> a, uni- oh. a, a unicorn, as most people oh. would refer to. Oh, listening. wow. <laughs> Dr. Franco just put on a metallic silver. It's a sparkly. It's sparkly. sparkly. Very Where's our mermaid hats? Is what I'm trying to find out. Hat with a unicorn on it that says legend. 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 So, so, so we get the black sheep. So the black and sheep. The legend. <laughs> So, so I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm just gonna have to like bring the thunder now. Yeah, bring the thunder. Forward. But wow. I mean, does the black sheep bring the thunder, or does the legend bring the thunder? <laughs> I think the, looking at looking at that hat, I think the, the legend brings the rainbows. <laughs> That's exactly it. Being the legend comes in all shapes and forms. <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> well, since since oh since God. we all since we're all ready to bring the thunder now, let's let's jump into a bring little little bit of of hydrofacial <laughs> and talk a little bit about this. Can you, for for people that don't know, can you maybe just give us uh give people a synopsis of what a, a hydrofacial mm-hmm. is, and then and then can we maybe talk about how how people decide what they need, and we'll mm-hmm. we'll maybe pepper you with some questions yeah. if you don't mind. Let's do it. So. First thing about hydrofacial, it's actually so popular that I don't know if anybody knows this, but it's a fun fact. Um, one is performed fun every facts. 15 seconds in the world at this point. Oh, wow. wow. Yep. Damn. That's every, people are having babies every 15 seconds, and they're doing hydrofacials every 15 seconds. That's what's happening There's as the many hydrofacials <laughs> <right? laughs> <There's laughs> <many hydro, laughs> as, many hydro <laughs> as, as babies? This is what's happening. It's wow. that popular. It's the go-to treatment for celebrities. And the reason people like it is because there's no downtime with it. You really can get a great cleanse, exfoliation. Um, you're going to get an infusion of serums that are appropriate for your skin. You're going to walk out feeling really hydrated, nourished. Um, you look kind of photoshopped after a nice hydrofacial. Oh, so wow. it's really good for plumping the skin, removing debris, all of that trapped oil and grease. Like after going to Miami, sun, sweat, sunscreen, all of that, you want to come in and just like refresh your skin. I've been actually having breakouts after that trip. So I'm ready for a hydrofacial myself. What's the difference between a hydrofacial and like your standard Groupon facial that you see? See, I probably get an email once a week for. Yeah. Well, a Groupon facial is probably just going to be like a regular basic kind of relaxing facial and there's nothing wrong with those there's a space for that but it's probably not going to give you a very medical result and so I think when we look at skincare or at least what I like to do is give someone a very results driven 
facial. I want you to come in on your lunch break and feel like, hey, my skin is glowing. It's refreshed. I was relaxed, but I also got something that's going to do something for me over time. And the most important thing in aging, as we know, is that we want to exfoliate our skin. We want it to stay turning over. And the older we get, the slower that skin starts to turn over. So we're constantly trying to trick our skin into thinking it's 21. So a hydrofacial is great every four weeks to keep that skin turning over and looking its best. It, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the hydrofacial actually has this this kind of vortex technology where it mm -hmm. actually does like a superficial uh, cleansing germ abrasion yeah. that helps peel off some of that vascular. And that, that's what exactly. really kind of makes it unique, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah, because you're cleansing and it's also at the same time as cleansing, exfoliating and extracting. You're actually getting three things and, well, four, it's infusing. So you're getting all of that in one treatment. And you mentioned lunch break. How long does a standard treatment take? Is this something that 15 minutes, two hours, somewhere in between? Does it depend? Half hour to an hour, depending on what we decide to do. Because anytime I do a hydrofacial, and this would probably lend to the question of who is right for a hydrofacial. Mm -hmm. Every skin type can do a hydrofacial, but then when you come in to see me, we're going to sit there and talk about what are your skincare goals. Are we working on pigmentation? Are we working on acne? Are we um, just wanting to hydrate and soften the skin? And based on that, then I'll create an entire regimen. So the hydrofacial will be one portion of the program, and then we might end up doing some blue and red light therapy, or we might end up doing a different mask or a light peel. There's just different things that we'll do to customize it for your skin. And is this yeah. something that, like, if, if Megan's getting ready for her, her big photo shoot in the, the Bahamas, uh, how far in advance does she need to do this? Or is this mm -hmm. something that's a, a one and done, sort of like Gilbert Stadium life? Or where does <laughs> where does all of this fall it's into into place? So if I was getting ready for a photo shoot or wedding or anything like that, I would want to do it at least a week before, if not maybe two weeks before. Mm -hmm. Because there's also something to think about whenever you're doing a deep cleanse and you're extracting and pulling up, there's a slight chance for a little purge. And I let everybody know, you might have a slight purge. If it was sitting underneath the skin and I pulled it up, you might purge. So you want to give yourself, you know, at least a week or two to kind of rebalance and restructure after that. Um, but most of all, your skin's going to be glowing and looking great. Would you say that this is something that could be done on someone who has sensitive skin, someone who like, you know, maybe, like you said, they, they break out easily or mm -hmm. they get really red and rashy pretty easily. Absolutely, because what's great about hydrofacial is they have all of these serums that you can customize the treatment. So if someone has rosacea skin, there is actually a serum for that, and we can use that to actually help calm the redness down. And if someone has acne, there's something like a glycolic salicylic mix that we can use to help stop those breakouts and clean it up. So no matter your skin type, you can get a great service treatment. That was my next question. I was going to say, what is the best, the ideal skin type to have this done? But it sounds like anything. all skin types, that's and that's really why cool. it's so popular. But I think mm -hmm. I think it's this is this is where it's still though dependent on on, and we've talked on other segments having a provider that's going to help guide right. you because I, I think it sounds like while it can treat lots of people, if you don't get the right treatment, you may not see right see the results that you're you're looking for. And part right. of that is the I think you mentioned that the consultation at mm -hmm. the beginning, like what are their goals, what are their problems, right. and and some of the stuff. I think sometimes people maybe have a hard time vocalizing, but you can mm -hmm. help walk them through that. Right. Because consultation is, I think, the most important step with anybody. First of all, you want to build that trust with the patient and you want to know what their goal is because my goal for your skin might be different than what someone else's goal is. And I think you probably see that when somebody comes in for fillers. You might look at someone and say, oh, I know exactly what I need to do. And then all they're worried about is, you know, the lines right here. And it's like, OK, well. We'll fix that then today. So I think with skincare, that's important to really talk it out with the patient. And that's what I love to do. I want to build a great rapport and I want to build a program for you that's going to work long term. I don't want to just see you one time and then we never do it again. Let's build something. Let's see how it worked for you and create a really good step by step program. And is there anything after you do this that you need to do to keep it up, like to keep your results good, any products or anything? Definitely. So I believe in clinical skincare. That to me is number one. So I feel like if you're going to come and spend the money on doing a hydrofacial or actually any facial um, with me, I definitely want you to go home with a good clinical skincare approach. And clinical skincare is very different than over-the-counter skincare. Mm -hmm. um, the delivery system is different. It's going to go down and penetrate deeper and actually start working on a dermal level versus something that you buy over-the-counter that's really only going to affect the epidermis. So really it can't do anything for you. So you want to make sure that you're 
giving yourself the option to have long-term results after your facial. Right. This is a question for both you you and, and uh, Gberto from a, a skincare, because I think the stuff that Travis and I do tend to do, like breast dog and stuff, where it's one time, you come in, it's done, there's a dramatic mm -hmm. change. But uh, my understanding, and I'd love to get both your guys' opinion, is that skincare whether it's from a, a medical or aesthetic, mm -hmm. it tends to be a process because most mm -hmm. people didn't get there overnight right. <laughs> into the damage they've done. And so the expectation that you're going to fix this with one injection, one treatment, right. one consultation is, is probably unrealistic. Right. Yeah. I think um, <clears throat> a lot of times, uh, at least with my patients, I, I tell them, look, this is going to be a process. It's mm -hmm. going to be a journey that we're going to take together. Mm -hmm. and And you know, I can get you to where you want to be, mm -hmm. but it's going to take, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z to get there. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, it's going to be over an extended period of time because to your point, you know, it didn't happen overnight. And so the recovery isn't going to happen overnight. Right. Right. And it also depends on the patients. What kind of downtime do they want? Like there's a lot of patients mm -hmm. that will come in and say like, I've got, you know, pigmentation or melasma or whatever, and I want to get it fixed right now. Okay. Well, there's things we can do. It's still going to be a journey because it's not going to happen overnight, but also, how much downtime do you want? If we do appeal and it's you're peeling for seven or eight days, are you comfortable with that? Or is it someone that goes, you know, I don't have time for that. I'm a model. I have to work all the time. I don't have time for that. Okay, cool. So like Gberto, he, yeah. he may not model. have time for more of the these aggressive stuff. The black sheep does not have time. He does not have <laughs> time. They no. just, you got to limit this. Can't, be I mean, can't, can't, be, can't, be, can't, can't put the black sheep no, down. No, can't <laughs> keep me down. The other thing I hear all the time kind of both ways is, oh, I already have a dermatologist. I don't I don't need to see an esthetician. Or I have an esthetician. Why are you sending me to, to, the, to the dermatologist? Oh, and and, and yeah, I, I don't. Think, I think they're it's, blended. Yeah, it's a symbiotic relationship. Can, can you explain that a little bit? Because I'm just saying from a plastic surgery standpoint, I feel like I hear that all the time. And, and it's sometimes uh, trying to guide people that there's uh, it's a symbiotic sort of like like Travis and I, I feel like have a symbiotic, though sometimes I feel like he's parasitic to me. How do you guys work work together to, to achieve these goals? And, and how do people kind of know which direction they need to, to go to? And I know that's a could be an episode all of in itself but i mean i know with me for patients that come to me like for example i have melasma so i'll speak about myself melasma, which is more common than most people think more common than most people think and i actually developed it when i moved to texas and i think just because the heat alone started to bring something out in my skin that i'd never experienced and it's it's a hard thing to treat and i have to work with a dermatologist on that. I, there's nothing that I can do. Lasers can't really be done for my skin because the heat brings the melasma out even more and actually hyperpigments me more. So I have to work with a dermatologist to say, hey, okay, we're going to do hydroquinone. Here's your cycle. Here's when you can be on it. Here's when you can be off. And then as an esthetician, I go, okay, and I'm going to keep my skin turning over. I'm going to be on some retinols. I'm going to do things to keep that skin constantly exfoliating because that's really the only way to keep it at bay. For myself so i'll send patients all the time like hey you've got to go see a dermatologist for this because i can't treat it and i can't prescribe and you have to see someone and i think just like we talk in surgery all the time and, and we had had dr hayden on a couple episodes back and we had talked about when to refer and when to do stuff i think it's like this when you have somebody that's confident in their skills and confident with what they can do they also know their limits and right. say hey look that's something that's a real problem it's just unfortunately something i don't do right. but let me send you to someone that that does i.e right. I, I i don't think people on the podcast or, or, or an IG realize uh, how many patients I refer to you because it's just stuff that's outside of my scope of mm -hmm. practice. Right. And I'm like, hey, look, I, I get it. It's a real issue. It's just unfortunately something that I don't deal with on a daily basis. Right. Let me send you to someone that does this every day, which in the end, while I, I understand it's frustrating to have to go see another provider, it's it's for the ultimate goal of getting you the best care. Right. And, and likewise, I do the same for you. I have Patients that sometimes what? have no. <laughs> that sometimes have have goals in mind that they want to achieve aesthetically that you know I can't do with fillers or Botox uh, or lasers and so I'll mm -hmm. I'll tell them look I've got a I've got my best friend's a plastic surgeon yeah. let me what you. yeah you yeah your best friend I'm to the number what one what am I doing over here <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do you know what I'm gonna do no. yeah. oh. Ew. that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. I mean, yeah, you move me into the number one spot, you you get the legend hat. You get the legend hat. Wow, that looks yeah. really good with that green dude, jacket. By you the way. you're it's on working. point. Dude. You're on point. I just think it on this day and age, the expectation that one person can do everything is a day of the. I mean, those days are long mm -hmm. gone. Unless you're in like some island, you know, beyond the Bahamas, out in the middle <laughs> of nowhere in the ocean, like uh, it's gone. It's those gone. days are gone. 
Well, when you have that that breadth of knowledge, you mm-hmm. sacrifice depth. You have to at some point. So mm-hmm. you can't be the world's leading expert in a gazillion things. Mm-mm. You can be the world's leading expert in two, three, four things, but you cannot be the number one dermatologist in the world, but then also be the best esthetician in the entire world. That, that just that doesn't, that work. Doesn't, doesn't work. Mm-hmm. How about how about in terms of like uh, pain, discomfort stuff? Because we always uh, punt those questions to mm-hmm. Travis, so he's the bad guy on the on the show. But <laughs> but is 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 there a lot of stuff that you need to to do in terms of discomfort, especially with hydrofacials? Is this something that mm-hmm. people have to take uh, pain pills, numbing cream, other no. things for? No, it's awesome. It's it's so relaxing, and I think for those people that like a true spa experience, and that's what they're looking for, but they want something that's going to do a little bit more than say that traditional facial they're going to love a hydrofacial because it's relaxing it feels cooling it's 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 i mean i fall asleep during a hydrofacial so it's <laughs> wonderful yeah and a little little nugget that the people who falls on ig know but if if they don't they, they probably don't know this is that i actually do there's a hydrofacial treatment for hair I, yeah. and, and and i've been doing that and one of these days we'll have to post a picture but i have uh, an identical twin and uh and that reminds me of a story that, that maybe we'll talk about later if we have a little bit of time. <laughs> but uh, my twin and I, actually, there's a difference in our hair. And I've, I've done two. And hopefully Katie will do the, the third uh, sure of the of the treatments for me here in the next week or two. Because i, I got to keep looking good. And yes. so... Uh, um, you got to keep that hair thick. Yeah. No, no. But it's just amazing how many different uses there are. But again, you need somebody to guide you mm-hmm. along that, that path. Absolutely. And anybody, is male and female, because there's a lot of females that also start to kind of get that thinning hair or, or lose their hair. Um, um, what's great about hydrofacial is that you're taking that dead skin up off of the scalp, which is actually what starts blocking and causing the inability for the hair to actually go- grow. Um, and so hydrofacial is great for that because you can actually remove that debris at the scalp. And I know they have products that are going to help to kind of infuse and encourage that hair growth. But the most important thing is to keep that dead skin on the scalp up and out so that the hair can actually come through. And I think it'll be a topic for another day, but just for, for people that are listening, I, I always see it in, in, in my mom was here this weekend and, and she's the, the worst about this. Anything that I have in my house, she wants to try and take. And I think that <laughs> yeah. people get in a bad habit of buying, spending so much money on products, whether it's at Nordstrom's, mm-hmm. Macy's, other stuff. And I'm not saying they're bad products, but if you're not spending typically spending money on two or three good products that actually affect you mm-hmm. tend to be a better idea mm-hmm. than having 40,000 mm-hmm. on sale products. Let's talk about that cuz this is <laughs> actually a really huge thing that I deal with and it's an education thing that I think it's missed a lot. And for a lot of patients they watch social media influencers, which is great. But these influencers are like, oh, I went to Ulta and I went to get this treatment at Sephora or I went and got this product here. And so they start to kind of buy into the hype of like a product that has a name brand behind it, right? But there isn't science behind it. There isn't a delivery system behind it. There isn't medical research behind that product. And so all they're doing is putting something on their skin that is literally the epidermis is the dead level of skin. And all it's doing is affecting that because it's sold mass. It cannot be monitored. You're not working with in a doctor's office. You're not working with a medical esthetician. You're not working with a dermatologist. So if you were to have a reaction, they can't possibly monitor millions and millions of people. So is there a place for it? Absolutely. But the cost of a really great clinical skincare line is no more than the cost of anything over the counter really but what you're getting with a clinical skincare line is medical research they're doing scientific they are constantly coming out with all of these great studies and showing you how it's going to work and how it penetrates and it uses more of like a pharmaceutical delivery system the molecule size is smaller so it's driving deep into your dermis but and affecting than, change but even more than that is someone to drive them because the, the thing mm-hmm. that like my mom does is she yeah. just anything new on the shelf she wants to try right and and right. and while products still be endlessly but that that product may not be what they right need and mm-hmm. and people get oh these are super expensive but it's like yeah but you don't need 40 of them let's no. pick three <laughs> or four you know quality products and that comes down to somebody saying what is your main concern is it fine lines and wrinkles is it pigmentation fine lines and wrinkles is it anti-aging is it that you're young and you are breaking out and we have acne there's a million products out there but you want to work with someone that can say this is what you need and let's do this and then if you don't like it or it's not working for your skin great come back to me we'll try something new so, and we'll get that great 
you know, product line. So what you're saying is we don't need 164 mm -hmm. things on our counter space no. at home. My I, wife, Mary, I feel is like so at your Trinity therapist, this. you may or may not come home and 42 products may be gone off the shelf. Yeah. So, uh, and it's so funny because in my practice, a lot of times people ask like, you know, what can I do? And I am like, oh, well, the biggest bang for your buck is let's get you on a good sunscreen. Let's yeah. just start there. And they're like, okay, I don't want to do that. I'm like, okay, so we'll spend $500 on Botox, but we don't want to spend, you know, 40 bucks on like a great quality like sunscreen that you can put on every day and it's it's sometimes a little uh, this i guess where us as providers really have to, to help uh, people because i feel like sometimes there's some very easy and inexpensive yeah. stuff a good moisturizer a, a sunscreen there's some a cleanser there's uh, i.e that's why she's the expert but you could see that there's just a few basic things that make a huge Absolutely. difference if you have the yeah. right person to direct you right. along the the track there yeah. right. right absolutely what one other thing I, I was uh, gonna ask, I've never had a facial before. What? Have you ever had one? Gotta do it. I've had one. Yeah. So I, I haven't. I, I would say most guys that I know mm -hmm. have never had a facial. That's absolutely true. So is this a shame? Is this a crying shame? Do we need to get we need both men. these young gentlemen in to get a <laughs> yes, little facial? I'm gonna give them can, a facial. Can we do that and then maybe get a score on Katie? Can yeah, we yeah. like wow. right here between? Yeah. What should you say, can one we, to ten? Maybe we can film film the Maybe uh, film a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Right. And just, so you, just so you know, Katie, no pressure, but uh, Travis actually has a rule that nobody can get a score of a seven. Yeah. And, and that makes it because if you're like, eh, then you know you're gonna get a hard six, or you got to bring the thunder oh. where he's strong enough to say, Eight, "I'm gonna give her a nine point five. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna get tens. So Damn! Oh, all right. Right. Awesome. Wow! Yeah. Boom! There I'm it is. I like it. I was just gonna ask you though. Um, do you think that more men need facials? Absolutely. 1 billion percent because men actually are maybe a little more shy about saying that they care that they're aging, but they care. Like I have so many guy friends and I make them all come get facials. <laughs> <laughs> uh, case in point is G. Berto. For those of you that are listening and not watching, one, he's got a legend hat on, but two, he's got a, a very, very pretty green coat here that I'm that I'm rubbing awkwardly on, on the camera. <laughs> and and it's just an on point pocket square. So I mean I feel like I'm really surprised that you've never gotten a facial. Oh, no, 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 I'm not I'm the only one. Oh, Travis is the only one. Because I'm gonna say I have to. Yeah, skin is your skin skin is but, but I, I would say I represent a large portion of men in mm -hmm. uh, in the Austin area that have probably never had a facial and mm -hmm. wouldn't even it's not even on my radar. It's not and on it probably the radar. should be. You know what? I think it is for men, even if it wasn't a facial that they wanted to come get, because I know a lot of men aren't going to maybe plug that into their regular routine and schedule. There is something that can be done for men. And I, I say keep it simple for all guys. Mm -hmm. You need a really good cleanser that's going to strip off all the oils of the day keep your skin looking shiny you need a good moisturizer and you need a sunscreen one two three that's it i'm not going to make it too hard for you that would be the the first three things i do then for that guy that really cares about aging we can move into eye creams and we can move into an exfoliator we can do that but cleanser moisturizer Sounds crazy. But I think even for our women who are just trying to dip yeah. their toes in, I yeah. think that that is a great outline great because place. honestly, like for just that, you don't have to spend a ton mm -mm. just to get uh, those things. And again, a good quality product right. is going to save you money down the road because I think both of you have seen in, in your practices mm -hmm. where someone who hasn't taken care of their skin well grew up in the, the day and age, well, not Megan, but the rest of <laughs> yeah. us all grew up right. in the day and age where, you know, we got our first good sunburn in the summer. Oh, yeah. It's like, boom, we're good. Boom. There's nothing else you need Base to do. And, and <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> Base just, player. We were all just getting ready for Miami. We just didn't know. It. Yeah, we, we didn't but, know. But you know, now we're just seeing the effects of that. Unfortunately, right. for everyone our age and, and older, mm -hmm. uh, that damage has been done. Mm -hmm. And so now trying to recoup that, but we can prevent people who are Megan's age and younger from, from, from going through that. what we and, have to do. And if what I can is... add something real quick, uh, what a lot of people don't know is you're that... the legend. You can add anything you want. <laughs> is that a lot of the sun damage that we acquired in our youth? Mm -hmm doesn't really show up until we're we're much much older mm -hmm. because it just takes so long for all that to kind of come to the surface and so so all the like the sunburns that you got growing up going to the beach going to the lake as a kid is what can sometimes mm -hmm. lead to like skin cancer yeah. and melasma right. and exactly. well, maybe not melasma but skin cancer and sun damage and stuff mm -hmm. like that what is actually the thing where i've seen this before where they can like take a photo of your face and somehow do something with it where they can actually show you like where all the damage is like of your oh, skin Versa. The, it's, yeah. 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 Uh, Versa machine. Uh, we have one in our office. Mm -hmm. Basically, okay. it's it's just like a special light. And mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. you put your face into this uh, apparatus that shines this 
light and it kind of uh, stimulates uh, where the sun damage is. Oh Prepare yourself. It. I did that. Yeah. <laughs> and I went home and I was like, Jesus, take the wheel. I am old and ugly. <laughs> I was like, I'm so ugly. This is so bad. I was so scared. I was like, please never show me that again. Let's just get to work. Let's just get to work. <laughs> Can we talk a little bit about, and you mentioned it uh, a little bit earlier, yeah. but how social media has affected uh, skincare mm -hmm. and facials? Because I think to your point, it's sometimes hard to see what's legit and what's not mm -hmm. because there's not a day that I scroll through Instagram that I don't see some new treatment in. Right. And I feel like uh, G. Berto and I are, are both on top of kind of aesthetics and skincare stuff. And there's some just stuff out there that, I mean, you know, goat yoga is great for like, you know, the peace of I mind. But I don't know that, that this is going to clear your skin. And so, I mean, no. I, it just, uh, how do you filter this? And Megan, maybe some thoughts of stuff that you see out there. And, and maybe we can, because Katie, about how do you get from that to something real i think for what we talked about too and we always kind of plug the kardashians i mean i think they we, we? well you <laughs> talk about the kardashians a lot. that was you that was time. you yes that was exactly <laughs> they my actually... favorite was like don't you all watch <laughs> crickets <laughs> i do i'll talk about the kardashians all day we goss gossip watches them we should have asked we should him ask we him. should have had yeah. him here they he actually was. brought up um kind of the idea of like the vampire facial i'm sure mm -hmm. you're familiar mm -hmm. with that as of well of course yeah i perform that treatment for people which can kind of look kind of crazy but i guess it has some pretty good benefits and mm -hmm. some of, i've seen some of these videos it's not really that that dramatic okay <laughs> it really isn't i was gonna say so that's a little yeah. like i think there's some dramatization, for dramatization TV, but for sure. uh, it doesn't have to be uh, a bloodbath i promise it actually you. it actually isn't you. a bloodbath at all actually if it is a bloodbath there's concerns actually because <laughs> oh, that's then, like we that need to call it. we need to call travis super yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, i did not know that no and this is i think the good and bad of social media is like it's great right. to get information out there and i love it because i think in the right hands it's a great educational right tool and, and it's something that I feel like like the three of us try and do on our social media now that uh, celebrity Anastasia has posted his first picture he's going to start doing that as well Fran Anastasia well shameless plug I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, what, what number of pictures are you up to on your I'm at one after wow. today we'll be at two you're, you're killing dude watch you're, the so you're exponentially <laughs> but you're exponentially growing you said I, you went yeah. from like one to 23 that's like 20% growth in an hour yeah damn that's good We're rock and roll 20% yes. growth is wow. amazing wow yeah. I'm impressed um, T tell me s some other last take homes for 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 facials that that you would you would advise people. If you had to give like a top three, like how do you choose one facial? How do you choose a, a practice? Give us a few take homes for 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 all your fans out there. Okay, well, anyone who has worked with me knows that I'm just so passionate about skincare. So there isn't anything that you can't do for your skin. If you want collagen induction, let's talk about microneedling. If you want to just keep that skin looking healthy and glowing and you want to help reverse some sun damage, let's do a hydrofacial. If you feel like you're having severe breakouts and pigmentation issues, you want to go a little bit deeper, let's do a chemical peel. Let's just talk about what you want, and then we'll give you the result. It's really that easy. Awesome. Any, any last questions from anybody that, that you'd like to? Are there to... any like major things that are like the top three things that are like the worst for your skin, like sleeping in makeup, not wearing sunscreen? Ooh, that's I a mean, good question. I, don't know. I was just thinking about that. What should I do with my makeup before bed? I just... <laughs> right? Well, if it's a night where you're out and you have to be up at 7 a.m., so like, <laughs> <laughs> can I leave this on I and reuse this makeup? <laughs> well, yes. I can 1 billion percent say that you should always take your makeup off at night. Mm -hmm. Like the first thing that's going to age you very quickly is sleeping in chemical driven makeup. Right. I mean, it's just not going to go well. And sleep is when you repair your skin. So when you're sleeping is all the repair. I don't sleep. I need you to you start and sleeping. Megan. You and Megan both. <laughs> <laughs> so for, the, for those of you that don't know on our podcast, the only times that we can actually communicate as a team <laughs> is between 5 and 7 a.m. And it's because uh, Travis and I typically start start work at about 6.30. Gilbert is is, is sipping his first cup of coffee. I'm, we're not sure what Tall Gamer Donald is doing. <laughs> and, and Megan is just getting ready for bed. So it's like the two hours. <laughs> it's like the two hours where we overlap where we can actually 
all communicate and respond in the same time. So there's a two hour window for us to get our, our production calls and stuff in <laughs> between five and gonna, seven a.m. I was gonna say I always miss Greg's morning show because I'm not away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed that you didn't want to hurt his feelings, but uh, they actually do have a podcast if you want to okay, listen to so them I can too. Check it out. I'm gonna be honest, at five and seven a.m. I'm actually sleeping too. That's really that's okay. a hard time. Oh, that's a, that's a tough go. Lucky, you lucky people. <laughs> so that's a tough go. <laughs> well, Katie, that was absolutely fabulous because I felt like I learned a lot and it's definitely Good. something that that I want to do. Uh, um, I want to do a little bit more of in terms of, of skincare stuff. We've done a lot of surgery based stuff, but I think to a couple points that you guys brought up, skincare is something, just some basic stuff that mm -hmm. we can, we need to do all the time. So yeah. hopefully we'll have you back again we'll if you're willing to, to come back and we can talk about one of these teams maybe just going over some products because I think that's a super confusing Literally, topic. Literally, we'll bring products in here that we carry at the office and we'll talk about why they're right for you, what is the right brand for you. We can go through all of that. It's so fun. I'm, I'm excited. And I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. all about ingredients. I'm, I'm, I'm so. excited. Yeah. But until that time, we we'll do a little thing that I like to call fact or fiction. Okay, let's do it. And so this is basically a segment here, and usually I, I get to, to pepper my colleagues here, and they're so happy that we have had some guests on recently <laughs> because... We've had some time uh, off. They've had a little <laughs> bit of time <laughs> off, out and, of the fire, and yeah. I typically bring some good questions. And yeah. so since you're a guest, we're going to ask you some good. questions, and, and hopefully my, my colleagues here will ask, ask some questions I'm too. Excited. But um, Fact or fiction, they can actually download you on iTunes uh, for some recent songs you've done. Yeah, I'm a singer. Uh, singer can, can we get a little, like, couple notes here? I mean, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> oh, let's hear it. Um, so I have a song called Stimulate. I have a song called Elusive. I think Elusive probably speaks more to people, but... Um, Don't you know I am the baddest chick in town and I hold you down. Give you everything you want, I don't play around. But you don't appreciate all that I do. You don't see what it takes for me to be with you. You don't see me, you don't feel me. Oh, and you're so elusive, you're so elusive. And on and on and on. Damn, <laughs> that's, awesome. that's what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. you know, and that was my morning voice. <laughs> wow, <laughs> here I'm, we go. I'm impressed, that, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's I, I love it. Hey. You can uh, find me on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> uh, fact or fiction? You actually only moved to to Austin within the last couple of years. You're you're a baby in this city. I'm a baby, but I feel like I know a lot of people already in two years because I love people. So it's been really fun to just integrate myself into the Austin culture. Awesome. Yeah. Fact or fiction? You and Gilberto have both done commercials. Fact, I've done a lot of weird things in my life. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you are you are you gonna be willing to share any 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 commercials you've done? Well, I, I, I heard a rumor that you've done done a milk commercial. Is this is this oh. is this true or, or not? A milk? Yeah, I remember the old thing: milk does the body good. It's, it, and this may be rumor. Maybe this is why it's fact or fiction. You can tell us whether this is fact or fiction. <laughs> I, well, what happens in this room stays in this room. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a milk commercial. <laughs> There's no shame in my game. <laughs> Only a few select people have seen it. <laughs> it exists. <laughs> well, let's, let's uh, on that note, since, since I feel like we're, we're trying to embarrass Katie. Here. I like it. It's fine. I heard a rumor that you are... Last fact or fiction. Yeah. I've heard a rumor that... Travis has struggled with quote of the day, and you're going to take it away from him today as well. I am. Okay, I'm boom, boom, boom. Oh. Travis, just like that, decision's Daggers. been made. Oh. I, I, I saved it because I heard it. Now, this is very simple, but it is so true. And this is for men and women, and I feel like in the dating scene especially, this Ooh. is something that I've really been um, a proponent of for women and for men as well. If you are confident you are beautiful. And I think so many people in this day and age where there's everything that you can do to be beautiful, right? We can get fillers, we can do skincare, we can do surgery. And I love that. That's great. I'm clearly all about that. But the most important thing that you can bring to the table in anything is your confidence and your inner beauty. You've got to let it shine because from the inside out, if you are beautiful, there's nothing that surgery can do to make you more beautiful, really, truly, if you've got a good heart. So if you are confident, you are beautiful. 
I, I love that. Damn, I love that. She may have actually cool. just taken. taken Damn. Take. That was How good. does it? I, I mean, the she one thing the we emotion. know. I mean, the one yeah. thing we know. Mm-hmm. One thing we know for sure is Travis is now third in his own <laughs> in his own in his own segment. But that that's cool. Maybe, maybe he'll bring the thunder. We'll see. Megan, I, you do a lot of a lot of uh, YouTube blogging and, and social uh, thoughts about that that quote because I feel like that would really hit home to a lot of your right? followers. Yeah, I think that's an amazing quote, and she brings a really good point too. I think it goes for both men and women, but I think. You know, especially when you're maybe listening to this podcast, mm-hmm. you're hearing about different things you can do to enhance right. your beauty. Um, just knowing that being a good person and mm-hmm. also having that confidence, I think, comes from being a good person. Mm-hmm. You know that you're treating people yeah. right. And so that kind of all encompasses into the way that you act. And I think people pick up on that. People are drawn to other people that right. are good people and make them feel good. Right. I mean, does black sheep break in confidence? I mean, legend does. <laughs> I feel like legend does. I don't know. Black sheep may have some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> but from a guy's standpoint, would you guys say that you notice women that are confident with themselves and feel happy about the way oh, they yeah. look and all that kind of stuff? I, no question. I, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, from an attraction standpoint, I would even say from when I started practice uh, eight years ago, and I, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty relatively young. If you're not confident in what you're explaining to people, surgery is a, is a huge decision. And if you go in to see somebody and they're not confident about what they're recommending, mm-hmm. I mean, why are you going to do that? Because right. you really want someone to be confident and, and on this. And a lot of times I'll be confident like, Hey, I'm confident. I don't do that procedure. Right. <laughs> and I'll send you. And I'll send you to somebody else. Or like, hey, yeah, I'm your guy. And so I think, you know, one, being true, being honest with yourself, builds that confidence. And right. so I think it goes at so many levels. And that that really is a, a great one because uh, being real, being yourself, all that stuff mm-hmm. just leads to a portrayal. Nobody wants to be around other people and then drag them down. Because I feel like when you're confident, you also uh, are secure in yourself. And mm-hmm. when you're insecure, then people tend to try and drag themselves down, the other people to make themselves feel better. And when you're confident, I feel like you're willing to let other people succeed because you're not worried about it. You're lifting yeah. them And up. you know what they also say? Confidence is silent. But insecurity is loud. Damn, I'm too mm-hmm. loud. There's Fuck. another one. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, no, you're not. No. Uh, but there's just one more point to make about this because I feel like there's – we are definitely more open in this generation to cosmetic procedures, but there are still those people out there that kind of judge it. Now, I have been loud and proud about my Botox, my fillers, my anything that I do, I'll talk about it. And I think this is what's really important too. You gotta feel your best to be your best. So if you don't look your best and you don't feel your best, you're probably gonna walk into the room feeling a little shy or insecure or not feeling great. So do what makes you happy, do what makes you feel great, and then go and be that best version of yourself every single day, and you'll win. Totally. I, I think it's true in so many yeah. places. I, yeah. I make my patients shower the next day because I feel like showering, just That's getting so dressed, good. people start to feel back like themselves. Yeah. The longer mm-hmm. you're keeping away yeah. from that, it's hard to get going because you Absolutely. just need to be be solid. So, yeah. Well, okay. I wanted to, one, thank Katie for joining yes, us. Yes, thank you and for having you, me. Hopefully she's going to join us uh, again yes. soon because I thought this was absolutely fabulous. And I think a big area that, that we've we've probably ignored for the last couple months on, oh, yeah. on the podcast stuff. And and so DM me if there's other specific skincare topics, questions that, that you'd like uh, us to talk about. And, and we can hit Katie up with that. Yes. And we can definitely uh, make those a priority in, on Love future it. future episodes for sure. Um, I'd also like to tell you guys, make sure you're, you're stay tuned. we got more episodes coming in the, the coming weeks. Uh, also, make sure that you're downloading the podcast if you love it. You can download it on iTunes, uh, Spotify, Pandora, anywhere where you get your, your podcast. If you love it, share it with somebody. Share it with one person. We'd, we'd truly, truly appreciate it. And I'd like to thank you guys for listening to the number one podcast voted on by legend Gberto himself. <laughs> thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>